presentation. Um, <laughs> 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 Thank you for back to him 101. Basically, is there a space bar? No, is there any reason this? We can just get the space bar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the common reasons for back pain, uh, how to diagnose it, some of the history, and surgical and non-surgical treatments. There's a lot of slides. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll answer them later. So for back pain, back pain is actually very common. You, many people actually have back pain. It's actually a lot more common here in America because we're kind of lazy. Um, about 60 to 90 percent of people in the world will have back pain at some point in their life. Five percent of people will have back pain at some point during the year. It's the number one reason for visits to the emergency room and your primary care doctor, as well as the number two reason to see any doctor at all. It's also the number one, number one reason why people miss work. And actually, if you look at professional or college level football or other sports, it's the number one reason they miss practice and games. It's number five reason to see an orthopedic surgeon. It's also a staggering problem because actually, it, with loss of productivity, loss of in, in, in medical care, it costs at least fifty-six billion dollars a year. However, that that statistic is from about ten years ago. It's probably worse now. So this is your spine. This we're going to focus mostly on the low back today because if I did the entire spine, we'd be here for three days. That's just, this is the front of the spine, this is the back of the spine. I don't know how much detail I need to get through here. Um, these are the discs. These are, these, are, these are called the vertebral bodies. These are the bones. You have five bones in your low back. This is the overall contour of the spine. This is called lordosis. Otherwise, people know this has sway back, where basically the, the back curves this way. Okay? Um, it's a very, what we're going to do. So, what are the causes of back pain? Back pain happens to all of us. As Esther said, when she bent over to pick up a luggage, which is very common. That's how most of us get it. Uh, other causes, strains and sprains, spinal stenosis, which is a narrowing of the canal, herniated discs. I think a lot of some people may have had one. Um, Spondylolisthesis, which is a slip of the spine. This degeneration, scoliosis, trauma, cancer can actually cause back pain. Miscellaneous and other, other reasons, such as pregnancy. So acute back pain. This is one of the most common things. This is what we were talking about earlier. Usually it's not really specific. Most of us will be over and pick up a sack of soil, a kid, and we pull out a back. A lot of times it's not really clear. Some people wake up and their back is killing them. They don't know why. And most of these episodes are self-limiting. Once again, these are mostly you strain the ligament. You strain the ligaments, tendon, muscle. This is usually caused by weakness of the back. Um, and so this can actually be prevented by, for most people, Actually, by staying in shape. The one, number one way to prevent back pain, particularly this kind of back pain, is to stay in shape, which means keeping the muscles that support the spine strong, which are the abdominal muscles and your back muscles, but mostly your abdominal muscles. Also, maintaining a proper weight, which in this crowd, not a problem. But in my patient population, it's very common. People come in and they're about well, five foot seven, they're 200 pounds, they don't understand why their back hurts all the time. And looking at them, you're like, wait a minute, but you're really overweight, and they hate that time. And so how do you diagnose this? The most important thing is what you tell me. Anytime you come in a doctor's office, the most important thing is what you're going to tell me. I can usually diagnose what the problem is before I even touch you. Because you, if you answer the question, you tell me what's going on. <coughs> Typically, once again, there may or may not be an anxiety dissonance. When I sit on the physical examination, people will usually tell me kind of what hurts. They'll, bend, they'll have limited range of motion. And whether you get x-rays or not is not, not, not absolutely necessary. Many times I don't get x-rays. And certainly I don't get an MRI for short-term back pain. And I'm not sure I would spend $3,000 of your money. And um, typically, you don't, there aren't, there's no numbers for tingling. If anyone, have, if anyone has ever heard of sciatica, which is shooting pain down your legs, typically this won't cause that. Um, other, <coughs> how do you treat this? A brief rest, meaning you don't lay in bed for three or four days. One, two, three days at most, the studies actually show that if you lay in bed too long, what happens is you get called what's called deconditioned. Your muscles get weak and your back pain gets worse. 
previous in your practice, like Mike or Cody. Really brief though. You don't want to do it too long. And, but I actually think the anti-inflammatories work much better. Advil, Aleve, we've all seen those advertisements, right? If you have back pain, take Aleve. Actually, it really works. Physical therapy and chiropractic care. Who's who here? Anyone here see a chiropractor? Error? Okay. Chiropractors can help. Sometimes some of their manipulations can be damaging. So you just have to be really careful which chiropractor you see. And the most important thing is early return to activity, which means early return to work. Work or whatever your life activity is. The sooner you get back, the shorter your duration typically will be. So unfortunately, for this kind of back pain, the best thing to do is get up and get moving. I heard you this. This is the, another really common cause of back pain. And one of the most common causes of why I see patients. This is just a brief anatomy lesson. This is your disc. Think of it as a jelly donut. The outside is kind of a tougher cake-like layer. And actually, in this case, is a lot of radiating bands here. And the middle is the, what we call the nucleus propulsus, this jelly. This is, this is your shock absorber for your spine. It also allows you to move your spine back and forth. What happens is this outer ring gets a little older. It degenerates a little bit. And that starts in your 20s. So even 20-year-olds can get herniated discs. Um, you, get, you can get a little tear back here. And the jelly will then squirt out back here. Mm. And that jelly is very, very irritating. You can sit on your nerve. See, so your nerve will be is either right here for the level below, or the nerve right here as it exits, in, exits the, uh, the spinal canal. And it sits there and causes pain. It causes compression. So it can actually cause, it causes pain in a very specific pattern. We call that dermatomal pattern, meaning that it follows the nerve. It's a ridiculous pattern. It follows the nerve. It's sitting up. So, by where you tell me you have your pain, if you have your pain, say, in your, on top of the big toe, I know it's L5. I know what nerve, what nerve it is in your low back. Uh, so, when you examine somebody, people can, if you tell me exactly where your pain is, if you tell me exactly what part of your body is numb or weak, typically mean I know what nerve it's sitting on. Which actually, the MRI helps me understand, confirm this. Uh, other physicals and findings are, you have limited range of motion, 